subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Moses the ability to perform magic that was superior to the magic of the court's magicians. And finally, we know that while the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa yes, he did perform miracles by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatest miracle of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was the revelation of the Quran, the revealed book and very spoken word or speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these miracles serve as a credential, as a proof for the reality of the Prophet's missions. Allah says in Quran, and I have come to you with a sign from your Lord that I designed for you out of clay, a figure like that of a bird, and breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by Allah's permission. And I heal the blind and the leper, and I bring the dead to life by Allah's leave. And I inform you what you eat and what you store in your houses. Surely therein is a sign for you if you believe. And I have come confirming that which was before me of the Torah, and to make lawful to you part of what was forbidden to you. And I have come to you with a proof from your Lord. So have taqwa of Allah and obey me. For truly Allah is my Lord and your Lord. So worship him alone. That is the straight path. MashaAllah. That sounds like Muhammad to me. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is a confirmation that the message that Jesus brought was the very same message that Muhammad came with, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And peace be upon it, Isa and the prophets that came before. They brought one message. Worship Allah, your Lord and my Lord. For that is the straight path. So how is it now that we have people who are now taking Jesus as a God besides Allah or as the Son of God? You know, a long time ago, I had the opportunity to hear a speech wherein the speaker made a statement that was very profound. And he said that nations, nations are born in one of two ways. A nation is born in truth or a nation is born in mythology, in falsehood. Now we can all relate to that. I know for those of us who may have studied the origins of the Greco-Roman civilization, and that's a part of required learning in Western educational circles. Y'all know about Western education, right? Western education, European education, they require you to study the foundations of the Greco-Roman civilization. We find civilizations here that are born on mythology, that are created out of a myth. The Roman civilization was born out of the myth that two twins lived for a period of time with a wolf. And this wolf raised them. As they got older, they became warrior-like. So this gave them license to go all over the world at that time and conquer other nations. We have myths in America that George Washington chopped down a cherry tree and never told a lie. The idea that Jesus is God or the Son of God is nothing more than a mythology that was put upon the people by not the companions of Jesus himself, but by one who was a persecutor of Jesus and a persecutor of the followers of Jesus. And his name was Paul. In fact, to be honest, to give credit where credit is due, most of the doctrines of the divided church today, and I was raised as a Catholic, and I recall there was more emphasis placed on what Paul taught than what Jesus taught. And if you read some of Paul's books, you will find out that he was no more than an opportunist. He was a chameleon. He would speak what this group of people wanted to hear, and when he was with that group of people, he would change his message, much like politicians do today. But as Muslims, we understand the birth of Jesus being a miraculous birth to prove to us that Allah Azza wa Jalla can create the human being in any manner or by any means he so pleases. If this event, Jesus being born without the agency of a father, makes him 
to be the son of God, or in fact God, then how much more should Adam be considered as a son of God, or God himself? Because he was created from nothing. No mother, nor father, just dust. Again, a word from Allah, Kun Fayakun Allah Azza wa Jalla said, be, and Adam was. And Eve, Hawa, his wife, was created from the rib, from a man, from the rib of Adam with no mother. We see children born every single day, millions upon millions of children. That in itself is a miracle birth. When a child is born, when a new baby comes into this life as a result of the husband and wife's love for each other, blessed by Allah the Almighty, and that new life comes into the world pure and obedient to Allah, that is a miracle. But because it happens so frequently, we don't see it. It's like, oh man, this happens all the time. Like if you were a farmer of apples, if you have an apple orchid, it's nothing for you to see apples all over your property. When they fall down, you just walk over them and because, you know, these, you just have so many of them. It's not important. If some fall down to the ground and they're eaten by the worms, so what? There's more that's coming. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to use this event, the birth of Isa ibn Maryam, to remind us of his power, of his greatness, and that it is he who is the giver of life. That it is he who has but to command, be, and it will be. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and guests, we have a great responsibility to share the message of Islam with the non-Muslim world. We have to tell them that we believe in Jesus, the son of Maryam. He is called the son of Maryam because he did not have a father. And he never himself referred to himself as the son of God. In fact, when one of his companions, Peter, was asked, when Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I, the son of man, am? What did Peter say? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Isa ibn Maryam rebuked him and told him, do not say that. Alhamdulillah. Isa was no more than a man. But he was a, a specially chosen man to bring a message, to bring the Injil. And he was sent not for humanity. Jesus told us himself, he was not sent for all of the world. He told his companions, don't go to the Gentiles. You only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So now, alhamdulillah, we found that that message given to Jesus السلام, being lost, being misinterpreted. We see children born every single day, millions upon millions of children. That in itself is a miracle birth. When a child is born, when a new baby comes into this life as a result of the husband and wife's love for each other, blessed by Allah the Almighty, and that new life comes into the world pure and obedient to Allah, that is a miracle. But because it happens so frequently, we don't see it. It's like, oh man, this happens all the time. Like if you were a farmer of apples, if you have an apple orchid, it's nothing for you to see apples all over your property, when they fall down, you just walk over them and because, you know, these, you just have so many of them. It's not important. If some fall down to the ground and they're eaten by the worms, so what? There's more that's coming. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to use this event, the birth of Isa ibn Maryam, to remind us of his power, of his greatness, and that it is he who is the giver of life that it is he who has but to command, be, and it will be. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and guests, we have a great responsibility.